Welcome artists to WQLM PBS. My name's Miss Molly and today we are talking about cooking and art. We're gonna learn all about how artists depict paintings and sculptures of food and cooking. We are gonna visit a pizza shop and look for shapes and lines and colors in our pizzas. We'll see how pizza's made. Then we're gonna be able to sculpt our very own pizzas today. Are you ready for the fun? I know I am. Let's look here at some of the artworks that we're gonna get inspiration from. We have here a still life of um, items that might be used for cooking. Now when you are cooking at home, maybe you're making a bowl of cereal or you're making yourself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, what tools might you need to make those things? Maybe like a knife and a plate. I'm not quite sure what they're painting or what they're making here, but I see they need a big pot and some eggs. I wonder what they could be making. Let's see what else we have. We have a painting here of Edward Hopper. Now, it shows a couple ladies sitting at a table. Where do you suppose they are? Hmm, they look like they're out. Yeah, maybe they're at a restaurant or a coffee shop and they're probably ordering something to eat. So Edward Hopper is showing these ladies getting ready to eat and we don't even know what they're cooking in the back yet, do we? Because their table's empty. Ooh, Wayne Tebow is one of my favorite artists. He always paints such delicious treats. In this painting, look at all these cakes. They're all different, yet they're all kind of the same size. If I was looking at the shapes, I see a lot of circles. And each one has a different decoration, and it looks like they're probably different flavors. Which one do you suppose is the prettiest one, do you think? I love the line that he used to make the swirl on this one. I love the curved line here with the rose on top. But this looks like a delicious cake because we can actually see inside it. I know that it's probably like a vanilla cake or yellow cake with some chocolate frosting. They all look wonderful. This one here is a painting by Norman Rockwell. He did a lot of paintings of everyday life, things that would happen to you. And what do you suppose is happening in this painting? What do you see? You see a lady serving a big roasted turkey and a gentleman behind her. But then I see a whole bunch of people along the side. Looks like they're at a table. Can you guess what they might be doing? Do you think they're celebrating a special holiday? They have, looks like they have their fancy china out and dishes. I love looking at their faces. They all look like they're talking to each other. This guy's in the little corner peeking out. It seems to me like they're having a lot of fun in this painting. And it makes me feel like sometimes when we come together with our families, or our friends and eat, we have good discussion and have a nice help or a nice meal to eat together and be able to share our stories and thoughts of the day. I love that. Oh, this one's Klaus Oldenburg. This here is actually a sculpture. And a sculpture is something that's three-dimensional. That means it's not like a flat painting or drawing. This one has a height, it has a width, and it has depth. That means we can walk all the way around it and see all the sides. This is a hamburger. And look, we've got a big pickle at the top. This is called a soft sculpture. He cut this out and made this with material like fabric. He has these big, big, these are huge sculptures that you could stand and this, this hamburger would not be this size. It would be really, really big. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about sculptures today. 
The one we're gonna end with is pizza because I said we're gonna focus on pizza and we're gonna go to a pizza shop and see how pizza's made and hopefully that gives us some ideas on how to make a pizza sculpture. So let's see, we're gonna be looking for a circle, but not all pizza circular, is it? Sometimes I see it come in a rectangle and this one was sliced into triangles. I see we have some red sauce, but maybe you wanna have some white sauce on your pizza. I see little chunks, maybe this is mozzarella because that's my favorite kind of pizza. I'm not sure what kind of toppings you might want on your pizza. Maybe you want some sausage or banana peppers or pineapple. Mm, I'm starting to think about my artwork already. Are you guys ready to get started? Yeah, we should. We're gonna start with making our salt dough. Because I said we're making a sculpture, that means we have to make some dough, like some Play-Doh, so we can mold our sculpture. And these are the things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a mixing bowl, some salt, some flour, some water, some mixing cups, and a big spoon. If you don't have all this stuff ready now, that's not a problem. You can just go to wqlnpbs.org and um, see the uh, lesson plan on there with all the things you're going to need. Here we go. This is what we need. Half a cup of flour, half a cup of salt, a third of a cup of water. It says add ingredients to a bowl and stir with a spoon. So I'm going to roll my sleeves up. I have my messy mat ready to go. Let's start with the flour, it says half a cup. I have my measuring cup right here and inside tells me that one half. So I'll get the flour, oops. Sometimes cooking is a little bit messy. That's why I have this messy mat. Whew. Scoop my flour in here, half a cup. Hopefully, oh my gosh, big mess. Hopefully the salt's not as messy. Here's our salt. I'm gonna pour, how much was that? Half a cup. Get there. I like that it has this little spout. It makes it a little easier to come out and less messy than the flour. Almost there. Look at that, I had just enough salt. And double check half a cup of salt. Now the last thing we need is a third of a cup of water and I have that measured out in my liquid measuring cup. Now it says to use a spoon and stir it up. It's starting to all mix together. Sometimes standing helps when I'm cooking. I'm having a hard time stirring this big bowl. All right, I think this has pretty much come together. I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna dump this out and finish kneading it. If it's too wet, we could add some more flour to it. And if it's too dry and crumbly crumbly, probably add just a little bit of water. I'd only add a little bit of a time, but I'm looking at this dough. This looks pretty good to me. It's just like Play-Doh, if you've ever played with Play-Doh at home. All right, my dough is ready. I'm gonna let that set. Let's make a quick trip to the pizza shop and get some more inspiration for our pizza sculptures. Well, here I am at Donato's, and we're gonna talk about pizza. Sometimes artists research their um, subject matter before they create their own. So we're gonna do a little bit of research. We're gonna be looking for line, we're gonna look for shapes, and we're gonna look for color. This is gonna help us give us some ideas for when we make our own salt dough sculptures of pizza. So we're gonna start out here with our dough. Now, do you see what shape we've used here? That's right, it's a circle. We have our circle here, and we have all these toppings to choose from. Let's take a closer look at those. Mm. 
Welcome back to the studio, artist. We learned so much at the pizza shop, didn't we? We learned that um, pizza, we could start with the circle. We learned that we could put different toppings on top of our pizza and then it goes in an oven and gets baked. We also learned about the lines, shapes, and colors that you will be able to use when you make your pizza sculpture. We saw circles, wavy lines, we saw green and yellow. But before we get started making our salt dough pizza sculptures with the dough we made, I want to share with you this story about Pete the Cat and the perfect pizza party. I bet you know this character. This book is by Kimberly and James Dean, and we're going to further see the different types of toppings that we can put on a pizza. Are you ready to join me? Pete the Cat loves pizza. Pete the Cat loves parties too. Pete had an idea of what he could do. He would have the perfect pizza party. You're invited to Pete's pizza party. Fun, games, music, bring your swimsuit. Pete's friends all arrived. It was time to build the perfect pizza together. That would make the pizza even better. Pete thought the perfect pizza would be cheese or pepperoni with extra cheese. We put pepperoni and cheese on our pizzas, didn't we? It's a party, a party, a pepperoni pizza party. But everyone did not agree. Callie said pepperoni would be just fine, but I really love pretzels on mine. Pete and the gang were puzzled. Pretzels? Well, that's something new, but maybe pretzels would be groovy too. It's a party, a party, a pepperoni pretzel party, pizza party. Squirrel said, pepperoni and pretzels would be just fine, but I really love pistachios on mine. Pete and the gang were puzzled. Pistachios? Well, that's something new, but maybe pistachios would be groovy too. It's a party, a party, a pepperoni pizza pistachio pizza party. Grumpy Toad said, pepperoni, pretzels, and pistachios would be just fine. But I really love pickles on mine. Pete and the gang were puzzled. Pickles? Well, that's something new, but maybe pickles could be groovy too. It's a party, a party, a pepperoni pretzel pistachio pickle pizza party. Gus said, pepperoni, pretzels, pistachios, and pickles would be just fine. But I really love popcorn on mine. Pete and the gang were puzzled. Popcorn? Well, that's something new. But maybe popcorn could be groovy too. Look at all those toppings on this pizza. Some of those toppings are ones that we didn't see at the pizza shop. It's a party, a party, a pepperoni pizza pistachio pickle popcorn pizza party. They're in the party bus. Beep, beep. Allig alligator said, pepperoni, pretzels, pistachios, pickles, and popcorn would be just fine. But I really love papaya on mine. Now Pete and the gang were really puzzled. Papaya? Well, that's something new, but maybe papaya could be groovy too. It's a party, a party, a pepperoni pretzel, pistachio, pickle, popcorn, papaya, pizza party. Pete and the gang piled the pepperoni pretzels, pistachios, pickles, popcorns, and papaya on top. The pizza was so high they had to stop. Ding! The pizza was done. Trying something new might be fun. They all built up the courage to take a first bite and the pepperoni, pretzel, pistachio, pickle, popcorn, papaya pizza was out of sight. Dynamite. Just right. In the end, the perfect pizza is a pizza shared with friends.
I'm so proud that they all tried it. Everybody had their own idea to put on the pizza and they thought it was dynamite. Look at that. And look at all these other toppings. Bacon, sweet peas, baked beans, pineapple, and chocolate. What kind of toppings are you going to put on your pizza? What a great story about friends and pizza. Everybody likes different things on their pizza. What kind of things are you gonna include on your pizza? I have some ideas for mine. If you are ready to create your artwork, you're going to need to get a work surface, your salt dough, maybe a rolling pin, if you don't have a rolling pin, a pencil or a marker. And I do have a little toothpick here to create some texture. Um, I found some paint. If you have some tempera paint or some watercolor or some acrylic paint, that would be great. If you're using paint, don't forget you're gonna need to get your water, your brush, your uh, a little sponge to dry off your brush and uh, come back and join me. If you're not ready, that's not a problem. Just go to wqlnpbs.org and you will find this lesson plan right online. If you are ready, look what we'll be creating. We have a wonderful pizza here, a pizza sculpture. Remember, this is gonna be three-dimensional, different than the drawing but we'll still use some of the same ideas like our shape, line, and color. Are you ready? Let's get to work. All right, let's get our salt dough ready. I'm gonna divide my salt dough in half. That means I'm gonna take it and break it into two equal sections. One section will be for my pizza and the other will be for my toppings. Now, when we work, with something like Play-Doh or clay or salt dough, we can do three things. If you can do three things, you can make anything. The first thing is to make a sphere. That's like a ball, three-dimensional. Here's our sphere. The second thing is a slab. A slab is a flat piece of clay. And I could just take my palm and press it down and I'll have what's called a slab. The last thing we can do is a coil, like a snake. And I would take a piece off, I'd squeeze it in my hands to make it a little long, and then I can roll my, hand, my dough up and down my fingers to make a coil. So if we can do these three things, we're gonna be able to make a fantastic pizza. So let's see, sphere, slab, coil. Are you ready to get started? All right, let's start out with our pizza dough. Now I would start out with a sphere. Can you say sphere? Good job. Then I would flatten it with my palm gently. You don't want to go pounding it and make it uneven. You want it nice and level. That means the same, nice and flat. If you need to turn it over a little bit, you can. If you have a rolling tool, you could roll it out. You could use a pencil or a marker. You could even stretch it a little bit with your hands. There we go. So I have my pizza dough. You could add another layer to your pizza if you wanted to put some sauce. So maybe it would be smaller. Just gonna move this out of the way a little bit. Do your same thing. One might be thinner. Oh, that's some good looking sauce there, isn't it? So I've got my pizza dough and then I added the sauce. Now I'm thinking, what do I want on my pizza? If I wanted to do pepperonis, I could roll little mini sphere. Oops, that was a little crumbly. Let's mix that up a little bit better. 
roll in a little sphere, and then you can press it down. If you have some toothpicks, or you could use your pencil, you can give a little texture to your pepperonis. This one would be bigger texture. You could place some pepperonis on your pizza. What about that onion? You could roll your coil. Remember it was curved? If it's too small, you can just, or too long, you could just pinch part of it off. You put pieces of onion. We also saw those green peppers. And you can roll your coil again. This was kind of a bumpier line for our green peppers. Kind of pinched in there a little bit. We had cheese. You remember we had long little coils of cheese? They were thinner. You could have cheese. What about in Pete's book? He had some different things. We could do pineapple. I'm going to form a little triangle and then maybe I'll press my toothpick into there to get a little pineapple. Ooh, this is filling up with a lot of good stuff. Beans. You had baked beans. You can do little tiny ovals. Or they could even be jelly beans. It could be a silly pizza. When you're all done, we're going to let this sit and dry. And then we can add some paint to it. I found some paint. A paintbrush, some water, a little sponge to dry my brush off of, and I have my sculpture here. If you want to add paint to your sculpture, you can definitely do that. I think maybe I'll just grab a little yellow and maybe I'll paint my dough yellow. And it doesn't have to be the colors that your pizza really is. You could be abstract, and that means you could have purple pizza dough if you wanted. When I'm going to change colors, I'm going to bounce my brush on the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry it off on that little sponge. Maybe I'll do the sauce next. Maybe I want red sauce. I'm going really careful around all my toppings. And if you don't have paint at home, that's all right. You can let it dry. And color it with marker when it's all dry. Remember what happens when you change colors? Rinse your brush. Dry it off. Choose your next color. Maybe we're going to have some green peppers here. Going carefully around. Dry. Maybe I'll have some orange pepperonis. Every time I run out of paint, I pick up a little bit more. Clean. Dry. Here's my pineapple. I really like pineapple on my pizza. Oh, I got a little bit of red in there, and that's all right. Maybe I'm having my beans. Or were they jelly beans? We've got a little piece of cheese here. Oh, and this was my onion. My little red mixed with my white and turned it a little pink. That's okay because sometimes there's like a purple onions and I think that's what that reminds me of. So now this pizza is all done. We have a variety of shapes like circles, like triangular shapes. We have a variety of lines, bumpy, curved, 
straight, and we have a variety of colors, green and orange and brown and pink and yellow. We've done a fantastic job creating a sculpture of a pizza. We can see all sides of this pizza. It's three-dimensional, much different than a drawing would be. Well done. Well, artists, we sure got a lot done today. We learned about how artists incorporate cooking in their artwork. We saw some some paintings of food, we saw some drawings of food, we saw some sculptures of food. We also learned how to make a pizza and we really investigated the lines and shapes and colors that we could use to create a pizza. We also read a great story about Pete the Cat and his buddies and how they had the courage to try that pizza at the end and they did like it. It was wonderful that everybody got along and worked together in that story. And then we created our sculpture of a pizza using our slab, our coil, and our sphere. Thanks for watching WQLN PBS, where learning's brought to life.